I can't lie, I was wrong. Battlelord, even a year after its release, is just not slowing down. I thought the updates would start to diminish and we'd maybe see something of like an upcoming DLC or content releases, but no. Tale Worlds are still hard at work making sure the game is improving, being fixed and... Jesus, do I mean being fixed. And even adding in content that was never promised but going above and beyond anything we first expected. First of all, I wanted to test out some of the new Battle Terrain maps. Of course, Tale Wars have been adding these in for the last couple of years now, adding in more intricate and detailed terrain and, well, scenes that mean that can be translated from the overworld map. For example, we've had 22, 58, 50, 60, 50, 58, 98, 87, 85, and 114. So let's check a few of these out. I popped a 22 first just to see what's going on, and it's a pretty nice grassy map in the top of the Sturgeon Land. It's something that we've seen many times before, don't get me wrong, but I still think it's pretty interesting. I really, really like the mountains on the side. It gives you that feel of fighting within a valley as well, and killing Sturgeons is always a lot of fun, especially when you have a beautiful crested hat like me. There is a lot of terrain here for defending, especially on top of the hill. You see the AI do that, but we managed to get our guys on sort of a level ground, so it's not too much of a hassle. Then, heading southwards, we head to number 58. Now, 58 was a little bit harder to find. It's a bit more by the coast. We can see we have a little oh, island on the, the right-hand side as well, just like on the overworld map. The water is in the right places, and there is more grassy flatland, as well as some oases, some palm trees, and all in all, it fits very beautifully. Then heading to 87 in sort of this area, we've got more of a, well, Azerite area, but moving into the steps as well. So it's a dry grass, a few trees here and there fighting at sunset. It is goddamn beautiful. We also have a little bit of water on our left, just like the overworld map where we have that sort of canopy of land surrounding the lakes with a few islands in the middle. That is translated very well onto the maps themselves. I think the battle terrain mode is one of the strongest features that Battle Lord has, taking inspiration from Rome Total War back in the day, having the one-to-one -one translations from the overworld map into the ground, and it makes you feel so much more immersed seeing uh, terrain elements, buildings, bridges from the map coming into the battles, and it means you can plan more. You can plan where you want your army positioned because they all are translated one-to-one -one within the battles themselves. Now, there might be something else that you might have noticed in the battles. There is a new little icon. When you're selecting troops to order around and then looking at the enemy, a little green target appears on the enemy unit. This is their new targeting system, and boy, I think this is one of the coolest changes we've had. It's called formation targeting. The system allows players to target a specific enemy formation with one of your own allied formations. It's done using the charge or engage orders, so you know, F1, F3 or F1, F4. Simply look at the enemy and then you can give an order. This is great for if you're trying to have a little bit more micromanagement. One thing I like to do is give the AI and the commanders the chance to sort of spread the troops out, get them in their formations, and then I can sort of take over a little bit as the battle commences, ordering my archers to shoot at their archers, or if they have some cavalry that are running around like horse archers, I can now order the archers to specifically aim at those lads. Having my cavalry take out the enemy archers when they're being left and isolated alone, it's something that is incredibly useful and I used quite a lot even within just these few battles to try and show off the terrain features. This is something that I think is so important because everybody is going to be using this with pretty much every single battle they use or well unless they decide to F1 F3 which you can count on many people still using that tactic. Then we have a look at a big feature that was part of the modern community for a while. I actually just made a video running down some of the weirdest battle of mods that you probably not tried, and one of the mods was the realistic weather mod, but Tail Worlds haven't gone and added it in themselves. Now, don't get me wrong, I think the mod is still useful since there's things like sandstorms and other variables that you can add in. However, there are now storms, thunderstorms, rain, snow within Battle Lord themselves, and they look goddamn cool, especially thunderstorms at night. Oh, hell yes. It really adds to the atmosphere. 
it. It will snow on the campaign map or it will rain and you can see this depending on where the clouds are. You will then, if you have a battle within these areas that are covered by rain or snow, be able to experience that within the missions themselves. Now, they're not just aesthetic, they actually do have a point. And, well, this point is kind of interesting. They will change and dynamically affect the way the battles play out, how troops perform and how different weapons and weathers are used. The grounds will become wet and snowy and will stay that way even after the precipitation is gone. And you can sort of see that on the campaign map after the rain, it still looks a bit damp. On the campaign map itself, the wet and snowy grounds will decrease mounted infantry and cavalry speed bonuses by 30%. So they will have a decent amount of difference when you're playing them, especially if you have a very mounted orientated army. They will also double the siege preparation time. So going to war at certain times and seasons is now a huge factor in your planning because this will happen or be more apparent in certain seasons i had to wait till autumn and winter to get the real effects of this weather and you will also have to do the same so sieging in summer is always going to be a better possibility because it lowers not completely negates but lowers the chance of things like rain and snow this also depends on the region snow will mostly just appear in the sturgeon areas well there's not chance of too much rain if you're fighting the azurai so you've got to pay attention to that as well. I can't lie, that's probably going to make the Azerai even bigger targets than they already are. In the missions themselves, the battles when you're fighting them, the snowy grounds decrease the maximum speed of mounts and mounted acceleration by up to 15%. If there's active rain or snowing, it will decrease the projectile speed of arrows and bolts by 20%, causing reduced damage and accuracy. So not only can rain and snow on the ground affect your troops and the movement speed of the units, but especially if there's active snow or rain within the maps and missions themselves, you've got to pay attention for that. So maybe staying out of those areas if you've got a weaker army and making sure that if you do end up fighting in rain or snow, you're changing your battle tactic in order to compensate for that. For example, using less archers and focusing more on your infantry units if you're fighting in heavy rainfall or even storms. I raided a village at night and well raiding villages with cavalry isn't all that easy anyway but also in a thunderstorm with lightning cracking and rain falling down it made it very very hard for my cavalry to maneuver and of course get up to their max speed not only because of the buildings but of course the rain and the weather effects that had now been added in i think this is a really really nice addition that will completely change the way that, that you play plan your attacks and dynamically evolve them throughout each mission as some smaller but still apparent changes, there's reworked auto battle calculation system. Mission and terrain types now provide bonuses or penalties for attackers and defenders during auto battles. For example, if an attacking horse archer on flat terrain has a large bonus, but if you throw him in the forest, it converts into a penalty. And this changes throughout the troops and the terrain types in any of the battle scenarios. Troops will drop siege machines once, well, the siege has been lost or won, and the closest to the siege weapon will be the ones that do all the reloading. So it's not going to be some random guy that runs right from across the battlefield to help reload a siege machine that doesn't really all make that much sense. Speaking of sieges, if your troops are hit by boulders, now they will not only be wounded but also killed, and all in all the sieges has been changed completely, making it a little bit more immersive and a bit more fun. Towards are definitely hard at work changing and improving the title and it looks like they're not finished. This is just the beta and there's going to be way more coming very, very soon. So make sure you stick around because it seems like Battlelord just doesn't want to go away.